Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Maria, for that prelude music. It is a beautiful winter day. It is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church year. And it's also the quilt blessing, if you can't tell. And this, I always say, it's a good day that we keep the temperature a little bit cooler in here. If you get cold, you got quilts around you, so no complaining. But we will be blessing the quilts, and you can see that there are many more that are folded up in the front. Now, are these all the quilts? I know, yeah, that we have in the closet now. And some have been given away and, and, and many go to the hospitals. Is it for just Freighter or others that go to Freighter for people who are terminally ill or in other need? And so we just will be blessing these quilts as they are sent off to do the ministry that they do and to, um, to share Christ's compassion with those especially in their hours of need. So with Christ the King, it's the last Sunday. Just a reminder that next Sunday is then Advent, exactly. And you'll be hearing a little bit more about how Advent might look here in this congregation. But I know there's a lot of people, a lot of our children are still visiting grandparents and our other places, and some people see the snow today and they don't want to go out and visit. But when we sing on page four, crown him with many crowns because it is Christ the King Sunday. If anybody would like to take a streamer and wave that around, I know Olive and maybe Danette and Paul will be doing that, but if anybody else, Bella, if you want to help us out, the hosts, of course, can't wait. So just come forward and grab a streamer. With that, I invite you to stand as you're able for the call to worship which is Psalm 90, and it's on page three. The congregation reads the bold part. Come and let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all God's small g gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for the Lord is our God. And we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hands. Well, I'm going to, does anybody want to walk around or would you rather just sit and wave the streamers? Let's sit. I'm just looking at the average age and people are just kind of like, I think we can sit. And if anybody wants to walk around, let's do that. We'll stand on the last verse. There you go. We're going to stand on the last verse. So I'm going to hand out some streamers, especially to Olive. <laughs> oh, thank you, Paul. And I know the hosts want some. Yep, yep. And the hosts want them, exactly. Yep. Come on forward, both Dennises. If you want a streamer, just come forward. Thanks, Paul, for helping with that. They might fall over, but that's OK. Thank you. And we'll stand for the last verse. We didn't plan this, can you tell? Yeah, no. we're gonna, yep. Anybody else want some? Here you go, Emma. There you go. Thank you, Emma. All right. Well, there's one more. Does anybody want one? All right. Paul will take two. Paul will take two. <laughs> All right. It's in the red hymnal, 855, and we'll stand for the last verse. Excellent. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, if people maybe on the ends of the aisles would like to bring the streamers forward. There you go, if Olive needs to hang on to hers, that's okay. Well, how fun was that? Thank you, everyone. It is Christ the King who reigns supreme. Thank you so much. So on page four, we continue with the invocation, the confession, and the forgiveness. It will remain standing as you're able. Blessed be the God, the one who forms us, Jesus, who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete, Amen. Let us confess our sin before God in humility. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us. Lead us back to you. Put us on a right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Hear the words of eternal grace and God's forgiveness in Christ. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are all forgiven. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray, the top of page six. Christ the King, you show us the way of service that displays the riches of your grace. Give us wisdom and strength to serve the world you have made. We humbly pray in the name of the most holy King, Jesus the Christ, who reigns at the right hand of God, victorious through the cross. Amen. You may be seated. Today's lesson is from the first chapter of Paul's book to the Ephesians where we hear God being praised for revealing ultimate divine power in raising Jesus from the dead. The resurrected, exalted Christ is Lord of both the church and the entire universe, now and in the age to come. And the reading begins. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his, in glory, of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him 
who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. I'm going to ask us, the gospel is rather long, and I know we were just standing for a long time, and since having a knee replacement, I'll tell you, I think a lot more about standing, the length of which we stand and sit. <laughs> so, because the gospel is so long, I'm going to have us sing the gospel acclamation as we normally would, but we can remain seated. And if you just can't help it and you want to stand, that's all up to you. So we'll sing the gospel acclamation on page six. Yay. This is why children come to worship. They learn the cadences, and we can't help but, you know, just share their exuberance. It is the word of God. So we're about to hear Jesus' last public teaching, as Matthew, St. Matthew, um, writes. And it's an important teaching. So Jesus speaks of the future when he will reign at the right hand of God as judge over all of the nations of the earth. And rather than be distracted, us being distracted by who's in and who's out with, with Jesus, because we're going to hear this, let's not fall into that distraction. But rather, Jesus emphasizes the importance of being aligned with him in his kingdom, participating in that kingdom, by serving people in need. Tune your ears into that. The Holy Gospel according to, according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, again, his last public teaching, when the Son of Man, Jesus, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne and all of the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those gathered on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you and for the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. Or a stranger, oh, excuse me. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous people will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the very least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and the devil's angels. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, you never invited me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you never visited me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and Christ the King on this Christ the King Sunday, which has not been a long-established festival in the church. 
It was only back in 1925 when Pope Pius XI established Christ the King Sunday to counter the rise of nationalism and authoritarianism in Europe. And many Protestant denominations, not all, welcomed this festival into our church year, our liturgical year. Christ the King over all the nations asserts that Jesus is Lord and King over all governments of every era. But how God relates, right, to worldly politics gets a little contentious. Did any of you take that up at the Thanksgiving dinner table? Good for you. As theologian Diane Butler Bass states, I'm going to quote her, simply reasserting Christ as king over the politics of this world may seem to be an appealing solution to some, to some people in our own times, but this is the path now pursued by Christian nationalists, influenced by theology is seeking to reconstruct Jesus' lordship and extend God's dominion through political movements in the United States and much of Europe. End quote. This could not be further from Jesus' teaching, of any teaching. So what does it mean then that Jesus is king or lord over all nations, over all governments? all governments and peoples. No matter how our political persuasion, no matter what it might be, or our religious beliefs or disbeliefs, it's perhaps most tangible to experience how, how Jesus is king, and how the reflection upon that, especially when we encounter Christ as king. It was 15 years old, and I got to travel to um, Switzerland, Austria, France, and Germany with the Milwaukee Youth Symphony Orchestra. It was a highlight. It was the first time we flew into Zurich, Zurich and I could not believe what mountains were. My first, yeah, like there's nothing like the Alps. You could have the Rockies. <laughs> the Alps, I'm like, holy cow. And we performed in many cathedrals and abbeys and basilicas, much are very breathtaking, especially for a bunch of high school students. We just, you walk in and you're in awe, right? For anybody who's traveled and seen some of these. They were created to make us feel small. And Jesus large, looming large, even untouchable or otherworldly. And in some ways, I would agree that that's correct. Because even in our reading, and readings throughout the Bible, even the angels and the heavenly hosts, what do they do before the Lord's presence? They bow. They fall to the ground. They worship. They are in awe, and they tremble. Then how much more should we, sinful people, bow and tremble, tremble before Christ the King? Yet Jesus does not teach this about himself as the son of man, as we hear that term in Matthew, or the son of God, or Christ the king over all nations. Jesus simply states that when we take up acts of mercy, we encounter Christ himself, not untouchable in a cathedral or a humble worship setting, but is Christ himself, the king. And yet often acts of mercy and grace seem to go kind of unnoticed or underappreciated. The world, if you think about it, has us throw a banquet or an award ceremony for great charitable, charitable acts or even not so great charitable acts. We give awards to children for participating, right? Okay, but not so much with Jesus. And it was in Wilmington, North Carolina, about 15 years ago, at a group home for adults who had disabilities that I witnessed very privileged teenagers from Heartland 
understand how acts of mercy reveal that Christ is present with us in the most humble of ways, really humble ways, very earthy ways. The building of this home and the property was newer to them and to the staff. It had been a farm and was being converted. So said youth from Heartland, uh, Wisconsin came down and we were given the task to clean the chicken coops and the goat pen, if you could call it that. I don't even know what it's really called. And these kids, most of the girls who were more concerned about their fingernails had never really seen a goat or a chicken up close, much less a coop. Not a nice place, not a very nice smelling place. And they thought, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And every time a nail broke, I heard about it. Not a hammer and nail, but a fingernail. Even from the guys, right? And that's okay. Yeah, we also got to prepare the kitchen and share meals. It was hard work especially in the summer of North Carolina. There was much complaining. There was much sweat. And I hate sweating. But I couldn't say that to the kids. And as I said, many broken fingernails and much protesting about the smelly farm animals that were still there. Not as many, but they were still there. And there was jockeying, of course. Who would work in the kitchen gladly over cleaning the chicken coop? However, however, by midweek, the youth and I started getting to know the residents. And we made time to play games with them. And there was much laughter rather than complaining. And by the end of the week, all the complaints turned to some tears from some of them with broken nails, much less, right? About having to leave their new friends behind. And given the importance of daily devotions and time for reflection, so critically important for all of us, we realize that in the hard work and in the broken fingernails and the chicken feathers that stick to sweat and in our games, and in our shared meals, Jesus, the King, was present through humility, through simple and hard service, and relationships with our new friends in that group home. Christ the King Sunday, and these encounters of mercy, and these acts of mercy, there's something sacramental about this. There's something sacramental about when we serve each other and help those in need, or when we are helped in our times of need. When we show up, as I've preached before, at just one more ministry food bank to organize the food that is coming in off the trucks, even though our backs hurt and our feet, and it might be very cold or very hot, or when we make sandwiches there that directly feed the home and the food insecure people in our very own neighborhoods, not far from here. There's something sacramental when we donate grocery items, feminine hygiene products, meals, Thanksgiving meal items that fed over 100 people at All People's Church. There's something sacramental when we make time for our children and allow them to make joyful noises in worship. There's something sacramental when we purchase Mount May Rue coffee, trusting that our advocacy, even in buying delicious coffee, right? That's not a far reach. Trusting that that advocacy for fair wages for our Tanzanian coffee farming friends in Christ is critically important not only for their survival, but for their dignity and for our humanity together 
There's something sacramental in sewing these quilts and all of the congregations and denominations that have quilting ministries and blessing them to be wrapped around terminally sick people or people on the journey. There's something sacramental in these and more because Christ the King is present through our service, our prayers, our hands, our genuine humility and care for each other, and the stranger that we still have yet to meet today or tomorrow or the days after. There's something sacramental. What, if we go back to our confirmation years, what makes a sacrament? Anybody want to shout it out? Jesus did it. Jesus did it. Right, and it's something tangible, right? Water, baptism, communion, the bread, the wafer. I know, that little wafer. It's holy, right? Because Jesus said so. And God's word. And it becomes a means of grace. And I would also argue, I think, as Jesus contends, to follow in his ways. That sacramental way of mercy is also when Jesus is present with us tangibly. Jesus is king over the nations. We sing that, we wave banners about it. Jesus is judge over all the peoples of the world. And we can get distracted about who's in and who's not, but that isn't up to us. Jesus reigns in glory with God and the Holy Spirit, inviting all of the nations not to worry about who's in or who's out or to cast others in or out as though we have that ability. We don't. But God's kingdom is an invitation, as Jesus tells us, to commit to acts of mercy, forgiveness, compassion, and love. Love all that reveals God's love for us poured out from the subversive cross of Christ that turns this crazy world right side up. For all who extend mercy, for all who embrace God's mission, hear the words of Christ, the King. Enter, enter the kingdom today. Amen. We're not going to sing today, right now, but we're going to move to the quilt blessing. And then there's a great song written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. And we've sung some of her songs before. She's a pastor in upstate New York. Has a wonderful gift um, for lyrics that are contemporary, right? And set to the tunes that we already know. So if you are involved in the quilting ministry, if you would please come forward at this time. These are some of the most humble people that would soon probably think, well, I'm just, I'll just sit here with the quilts. But they've done enough of that in the Tanzania room on Tuesdays from 1 to 3 over the years. And now who's, and, and Ellen, maybe you can speak into the microphone. I know Marion's not here, but who else? We're missing Marion. We're missing Margie Fenzel. We're missing um, Karen Otto, mm -hmm. Judy Spencer, and uh, Margaret Shawey. Um, I think that's all we're missing. We're also mm -hmm. missing Connie Fowler, and Gail Povey, and Dottie Bai, and, um, and Maud McAuliffe, and a number of other people who are just no longer with us, unfortunately. But um, those are the those are the people here and mm -hmm. now, and, and and so the quilters meet on Tuesdays from one till three, and guess what? You don't have to know how to quilt, right? Um, if you can tie a knot or just have a good conversation, as we are saying, acts of mercy sometimes is just having a conversation and sitting with a community, right? That is most important. So everybody is always welcome. And then would you like to say where the quilts go, anybody? Thanks, Evelyn. So we take them out to Freighter Hospital. And originally, uh, they would say the quilts went to hospice patients. But anybody that's at that end of life stage um, is gifted a quilt to brighten uh, those dark 
you know, sad last moments of their life. And we get the most beautiful thank you notes back from families of their appreciation of how that helped just that little bit extra for them to um, be able to get through that, at that time of their lives. Um, you may notice we also have little dolls over here. And um, the dolls are used by their uh, social uh, ministry team. Um, frequently they're given to children that are um, either in the hospital themselves. Uh, the doctors can draw on the doll to say, so this is where I'm gonna make a little cut in you and we're gonna go in there and this is what we're gonna do. Um, or they're used kind of like the old fashioned autograph or conversation doll to uh, put well wishes on it from the children to the patient or um, um, whoever that it, you know, the, uh, the team there feels that uh, this would be helpful for them to uh, at that time in their life. Great. Any other things that the quilters might want to share? Otherwise, no, Luann, okay. Um, otherwise, there's quilts all around us today. So I would ask that we touch a quilt, and then I'm going to lead a prayer and a blessing. I'm going to go over to this pile. All right. And, and we receive quilts here, too. And I think I'd like to just remind people, if you know someone who's having a surgery or could benefit from a quilt, please let us know, and you can, we're, we're more than happy to share. All right. Holy Spirit, gracious triune God, Jesus, the good physician who is with all in their times of need, our good shepherd. We ask that you would look upon these quilts as our hands touch them today for blessing, as our quilters have touched them and created them and, and have had wonderful conversations and sharing ministry together for the good of people in need. We ask that you would bless these quilts today, that when they are wrapped around any person in need, that they may feel your acts of mercy through our hands and know that you are truly with us and with people in their time of need. Bless the quilters, bless all of the quilters throughout this world who enter into this ministry for the good of all people in need. We bless these in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you, quilters. Do the quilters need any help um, after worship with folding or anything? Or? It, it might be nice to have okay. a couple people help fold. We're gonna leave them upstairs here and then hopefully uh, sometime this week get a chance to take them out to the freighter. The freighter. Excellent. I'll invite everybody to stand as you're able. On page seven, we sing, God, you wrap your love around us. <laughs> Yay, again. We continue with the prayers of the people. The response that you'll hear Randy say is, he'll say, hear us, O God, and the response is, your mercy is great. Let us turn our hearts to God as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Christ the King, from you we receive our invitation to feed, clothe, and welcome all. Direct your church to respond with faithfulness and love. We pray for the work of Just One More Ministry Food Bank, ELCA World Hunger, in partnerships with Global Feeding Ministries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Christ the King, you, you unite us with creation, with mountains, fields, forests, oceans, and animals. We seek your guidance and protection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Christ the King, guide rulers of every nation in ways of humble leadership and wise decision-making. Break open the hearts of warmongering rulers Allow aid to come to all who are oppressed, especially in Palestine, Ukraine, and nations with unjust leaders. Hear us, O God. 
the mercy is great. Christ the King, nourish all who hunger, connect any who are isolated, and comfort all who experience rejection or abuse. We pray for those who suffer or are near death. We pray especially for Dennis Walker as he mourns the death of his mother last Wednesday. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Christ the King, inspire this congregation to embrace your purpose to feed the hungry, build up partnerships, pursue justice, and embrace all who are sick or dying in quilts handmade by our quilters. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Christ the King, we praise you for the faithful witness of those who have served you and now rest in eternal peace. Unite us with them as one body of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. For what else do we pray this morning? Your mercy is great. Into your merciful arms, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, the King, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you all. Let's take some moments to share that peace with those around you. That's peace, Randy. The precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord, strengthen you to be God's people today and this week. Amen. Page 11, we pray together. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. You may be seated. I would just like to share Ta -da. Advent again starts next week as just a reminder. And on page two in your worship bulletin, we are entering into practicing wonder. Wonder doesn't happen all on its own. I often think about children and their gift of wonder and curiosity to learn new things, but they kind of practice that, don't they? As they learn and experience new things, they wonder many other questions. Advent will give us the time and the ministry together to practice wondering about how we encounter the Holy Spirit together and look for Christ in the Advent time to come whether it is five minutes from now or at the end of time. Certainly there's a lot to wonder about. So the weeks of December 3rd starting next week is wonder and love, that's our theme. December 10th, the following is wonder and stories. And then December 17th is wonder and thin places and that doesn't have to do with dieting, but maybe we'll wonder about that. <laughs> And then the fourth Sunday of Advent is actually December 24th. So we will have a different series that day, a different theme that day. So on Wednesday evenings, you can stay nice and warm and cozy in your homes. You can meet with each other if you'd like, but we will have a Zoom gathering at 7 to 8 p.m. to talk about our Advent um, reflections that have to do with these themes. And you might be thinking, what reflections, what devotions. On the back table, there is a practicing wonder with all of our heart, mind, strength, and soul devotional, daily devotional Advent booklet. It is wonderfully written by um, some Episcopal pastors and other authors within our community. Scott Stoner, some of you may know, and others. 
and Carolyn Carl works for this um, group called Living Compass. They put these out every Advent and Lent. And I've been saying for the past several years, we're going to do this at some point. So this is it. So you get to stay nice and warm and cozy at home on Wednesday evenings and join on the Zoom invite from 7 until 8. You'll see that invite on Wednesdays afternoons or whenever you open up your email and our Wednesday um, bulletin board. If you need help getting a, a signed up for that, let me know. Or in her office today, Allison Grassel, our communications person. So this is a wonderful way to kind of slow down during the month of December, which is often ramped up, to really practice wonder and to reflect on that together. So I invite you as your pastor to think about that and perhaps to, to commit to those three Wednesdays or at least one or two of them if you can. Um, thoughts about that? I'm going to leave you to wonder. Or I'll stop with that, I promise. Okay, and then we always have a special Advent giving. There's regular Advent giving, which goes to the church and the ministries here. But then we kind of go over and beyond. And it has to do with building greener and healthier schoolyards. And basically, it's within the Milwaukee public school system where they are asking for people to donate all different there's nonprofits, there's for profit, everybody is working together um, to turn asphalt schoolyards, which are just, you know, not very creative, they're not very good for our environment, but they're exchanging those for wonderfully green uh, schoolyards, for classrooms that can happen outside. You can read about that on page two but our donations will go towards supporting one school in particular right now that's waiting for funding to come through. There's, they're on cohort six already. They've started this a while back, but it's Story Elementary. And basically that's over near the Miller Valley. So help our students learn and thrive and grow. I mean, would you rather sit on an asphalt schoolyard or a green schoolyard? with classrooms that can happen outside and curiosity where there's indigenous native plants to Wisconsin and so much learning can happen, right? I know where I would want to send my kid and I think that's important for us to consider. So that's our special Advent giving and we hope to have somebody from the Milwaukee Public School System talk to us either next Sunday or the following, um, which would be a nice temple talk. Speaking of talking, I'm doing too much of it. And I heard the bell, the chime go off. But there are, on page 14, some wonderful concerts coming up. Um, Christmas at Concordia. Next, if not the 30th, on the 30th, we have, wait, is it November 30th? Is that right? Like, what, where are we, right? It just feels so weird. Chandler Dillingham will be here. And the Milwaukee Mandolin Orchestra, and I know the first time I heard about a mandolin orchestra, I thought, really? Is that next to like the cousin, the banjo? But it, they were incredible. But the Milwaukee Mandolin Orchestra will be here on the 9th of December at 2 p.m. And if you get a chance, there, you, there are tickets for that. Please consider it. I was just in awe. All right, you can read. I'll leave the rest to you. Let's stand for our sending hymn. Soon and very soon, it's in the red hymnal. 439, the Lord bless you and keep you and make God's face shine on you and give you joyful hearts today and always. Amen.